Okay, so these are some basic directions on how to solder the control board for the 144 volt 500 amp controller. First you're going to want to do the resistors. There are 31 of them, not including the gate resistors because you wait until the end before you do the gate resistors. Okay, now if you've ordered a kit from me, you'll have, uh, you'll get these bags with all of the little, <laughs> get these bags with all the part numbers written on them. Or when you order it, you could type those in yourself manually from the wiki. So you've got get all your resistors together. You can get the inductor out also. This little thing here. That won't hurt anything to solder that into. And just start taking your resistors and if it says R2 through R6, then just find R2, R3, R4, R5, R6 and just start soldering them all in. So give them a bend kind of like that so that they can fit through the hole. Make sure you have a fan blowing also because the solder smoke will give you a headache and it's not healthy. So you bend them and then so for example here's R5 just poke it through there you go There. and then flip it over See, there's a, and solder it into place. Keep your soldering tip clean. Wipe it off with a, a sponge every couple solders or so. <clears throat> I use, oh, uh, what is this? 0 0.032 diameter solder and 22 gauge fl uh, with flux in the core. Okay. So you just you heat the the lead and the and the uh, circle <laughs> and the ring at the same time. Just give it a little bit, give it a second to there you go. So you want to make sure the solder is sticking to the the ring on the board also. So that's why you want to heat the board and the the lead at the same time when you melt the solder onto them. And once you've done a solder joint, just chop off the legs and move on to the next one. Now, whenever you see a ring that looks like it's attached to the whole copper plane that's going to be a little tougher to solder to so go ahead and put a little bit of solder on your soldering tip and then just stick it on so it's making contact with the um, the, the plane the little ring that's touching the plane let it sit for there for a second and then Go ahead and put some on there and then lift it up and it should stick. It just needs a few extra seconds if you've got a strong enough of a soldering iron to stick to it. Those are the most likely cause of a, of a mistake in the controller assembly. If you get a bad solder joint, the whole thing, it's possible that the whole thing won't work. So be really careful and make sure that every single joint is, is good. Okay, now for the the inductor, this little black thing here, the orientation is very important. Let's see the, the little square there? It says Schaffner across the top. The top goes up here, so like this, like that. So don't get that mixed around. That'll cause you serious problems. 
And what I do to keep it in place, I flip it over, kind of bend the legs a little bit. Those are thick legs. There we go. And then it, it should stay in. There. Now you gather up all your the capacitors and do those right after the resistors. Okay. The resistors didn't it didn't matter which way you put those in. There was no orientation for those. But for the the cylinder shaped capacitors, the electrolytic capacitors, that's what these are called, they do have a plus and a minus side. Now the minus side is marked with a big minus sign right over here. See the little band? So when you see the on the board, it's going to say plus and minus where those go. And so you want the plus to go with the plus. So be really careful about that. There you go. Now for these ceramic capacitors, the non-cylinder shaped ones, they don't have an orientation. So you can stick them in any way you want. Okay. Now gather all your diodes. Those are the ones that have a, uh, like D8, D9, O, D1, D2, D3. There are nine of them all together. Put those in after you've put in all the capacitors. These have an, all of these have an orientation. This is very important. This matters which way they go in. So these are D8 and D9. They're going to have a it's hard to see there. They're going to have a band on them. They have a little black band at the bottom, uh, on one side. That little band has to match up with the little band on the on the board. See how the on the board the the outline has a, a double line on one end and nothing on the other end. Make sure that 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 little band on one end matches with the the band on the diode very very important some of the bands are a different color for example D1 has a gray band around it but it still matches make sure it still matches with the the little white uh, band on the control board when opening the the components that come in the static uh, sensitive bags, the bags that are uh, this shiny material, make sure that you haven't been shuffling your feet around on the carpet or something and just maybe touch some metal surface and make sure you're not about to zap anything when you, when you handle these components. Okay, now for the LEDs. Um, Notice on the board, one of the ends is kind of flat. It's cut off. It's almost a full circle, but one end is like a chopped off. Well, on the LED also, there's one end. It's not a complete circle. One end of it is cut off. When it, the end that's cut off is the shorter leg. So stick the shorter leg into the hole that goes with the chopped off circle on the board. Next, solder in all of your Q stuff, like here's Q1, and basically those are all uh, transistors of some sort. And once again, they're in static shielding bags, so make sure you're not ready to zap something when you open it. Okay, so the flat back of this transistor should line up with the, the double lined back on Q1. Okay, anything in these packages, <laughs> like Q3 for example, it looks like a, a half circle on the on the board, so the half circle shape that it is should just match up with the half circle on the board. The orientation matters if you flip it around, the pins will be reversed. Now do all of the U's. Those are the 
things that have more stuff inside of them, more complicated things like the microcontroller and the power supplies and uh, and gates and different things like that. So here's the here's U1. Just go ahead and bend the legs down to like a 90 degree angle, just like that, and stick it in those three holes there. You want, I would use a number four screw and put it in through the bottom. There's a hole just for that. It doesn't matter if it sticks up a ways. And put the nut on on top. You don't want to put it through the other way because you don't want it to extend too far down. Now on the ICs, the integrated circuits, the legs are going to be wider than the holes a little bit. I don't know why they do that. So you have to squash them down a little bit. Just all the way across. There we go. And there's going to be a notch on one end. It's like a little half circle notch thing that notch is, needs to match up with the little half circle notch that's on the control board so the orientation of these chips matters that's really important I just solder one leg in once you get it in and then push up on the integrated circuit on the chip and then reheat that leg and keep pushing on it and then take the heat off and that'll let it lay nice and flat and it'll hold it in place. Then once just the single leg is soldered you can do the rest of them. Sometimes the chips just have a dot in the, uh, marking pin number one instead of having a notch in the center on one side. Well then the chip should go in the direction so that 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 circle that's on the chip is as close as possible to where the notch is on the uh, outline on the control board. You may want a socket U3, meaning put in a, a, a socket in here right for U3, the microcontroller, or not, you know, either way. Okay, for U2, the Syncon, where it says in on one end, it says in on one end and out on the other. The inside goes with the little notch on this end here. And by the way, there, there are more holes on the board than there are in here. Some of the pins are, are unused. So just make sure that the, the outlines match up all the way around and then the holes will be in the right place I mean the pins will be in the right holes now if you've gotten a kit the motor uh, the microcontroller comes programmed already but if you're just doing it yourself you'll need to program the microcontroller before it'll do anything on here you can solder it in anyway that doesn't matter because you can program it while it's while it's soldered in through these uh, six pins here at J4. I usually do Y1 is one of the last things just because it's so tall and it's just irritating to have it sticking out the whole time. The orientation of Y1 doesn't matter at all. I'd save uh, J2 and J3 and RT1 and until later, until the very end because you don't want to have big wires hanging out and dangling around while you're trying to solder everything. And then also, the same with J1, just, you know, just solder those wires in at the end also. The assembly help file uh, has a lot of pages with good pictures on how to make J2 and J3 and how to connect RT1. So go ahead and check that out for those. So for J1, you'll need to strip the ends of the wires and 
put them through like this, the colors go red, black, yellow, and then the twisted paired at the end. First one is the 12 volts, uh, the 12 volts plus from the battery, your car battery. The second one is the 12 volt ground for the car, like the chassis. And the next wire is the optional contactor control. It basically just outputs 12 volts relative to the black wire here. That's to just turn on a 12 volt coil on a contactor. And the twisted pair is your throttle. It doesn't matter which one is connected to which wire on the your 5k pot, your potentiometer. At this point, if you wanted to test it out, you could connect 12 volts across here, across your red and black wire, just a 12 volt battery, and what you should see is the yellow light flashing pretty fast. It should be flashing on and off about five times a second. And that's because, uh, first of all, the throttle's not hooked up, and the current sensor's not hooked up. To make the yellow light stop flashing, you would need to hook up your, your throttle and make sure it's twisted all the way to set to zero throttle, which is zero ohms, or close to zero ohms. And on J3, you would need to have your, uh, your LEM current sensor plugged in. Then if you gave it 12 volts again from here to here, uh, the yellow light should just be on and solid and not flashing at all. And the green light should also be on right here. If those two are both on with everything connected, assuming there were no solder bridges or anything, then the controller should be working properly. Well, the control board should be working properly. Here's an example of what you would need to solder into RT1. And the other end is where you would solder the temperature sensor. So here's RT1 soldered into place. You'll need to add the thermistor on the other end. Solder one leg to each wire, doesn't matter which one goes where. Only J2 needs this little angle uh, connector thing, so go ahead and solder that in. J3 really needs a reliable connection, so it's better just to solder the wires straight into it. Here's the board pretty much done until the very, very end where you add the gate resistors and pH1 and pH2. Alright, and you can have the, I would set this about to the middle or so, that's the hardware overcurrent protection trip point. Just, I wouldn't have it all the way uh, counterclockwise, that would be about 495 amps, and the software is set to limit to about 505 amps, so I would set the i twist that thing about to the middle or maybe a quarter of a turn and that would limit the current, uh, the hardware over current protection would be set to around 600 amps or so and it will never really trip then because the software will take care of it. It's just the last line of defense. Okay, alright, soldering for the control board is done.